We do ask that you do not spam the chat or distract your fellow participants. Um, if one of the moderators does feel that behavior is inappropriate or disruptive in any way, we will unfortunately have to remove the people involved. We really don't want to do that because this is such a great program and we really want everybody to enjoy it. So just keep your conversations relevant to everything that you see on the screen. That shouldn't be hard. It's really exciting stuff we're, we're going over today um, and we'll all have a great time. Uh, you may have also heard Barnes mention that we're going to be broadcasting on YouTube Live. So in the event that you want to rewatch this presentation or share it with your friends, we will be sending a link to our YouTube page in an email tomorrow. Um, and lastly, you can see a discount code on the screen right now that will get you 25% off our presenter's brand new book. Um, and I will make sure to post that information in the chat so that you can just click the link and go to the site directly. But if you do miss this information, don't worry. Uh, this information will also be included in tomorrow's email. So on that note, I would like to introduce our absolutely remarkable presenters. Uh, we are super excited to be joined today by Dr. Girai Akhtin and Arya Akhtin, whose recent book, The Mathematical Investigations of Dr. O and Arya, is this amazing playful approach to some core ideas of mathematics. Um, Aria is a PhD student in immunobiology at Yale University and Dr. O's original student. Uh, she likes to spend her free time reading books and enjoying good chocolate, which is definitely something that we have in common. And Girai, also known as Dr. O, is a professor of mathematics at Florida State University. When he isn't at the Blackboard teaching, he likes to spend his time listening to classical music and watching film noir movies, which you may or may not know is a great place for potential secret codes. Um, I would also like to note that this digital program is being offered in partnership with the Leroy Collins Co uh, Leon County Public Library System in Dr. O's hometown of Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, you can find a link to their website on the activities page, uh, which had the code wheel on it. And that way you can go in and check out all the programs that they have to offer as well. So we have a really exciting program for you guys today. Uh, I know you don't wanna listen to me talk anymore. So I'm gonna turn it over to our wonderful Aria and Dr. O, take it away. Thank you. Thank you for this nice introduction, Natalie. And thank you all for joining us. Um, I want to begin by telling you about how this book started. When Arya, my daughter, was in elementary school, she was very interested in math. We would solve problems together and talk about some interesting math she was not taught at school. On weekends, we would go to a bookstore and I would browse math books for kids to see if there was anything interesting we could read together. Unfortunately, most math books at that level are like workbooks where you do repetitive exercises. I decided to find some topics myself, um, mathematical topics that are interesting, and topics that would help with the abstract mathematics, such as algebra, that she would soon be learning in middle school. One day I said to myself, why don't I teach a little workshop and invite Arya's friends from her school? When I mentioned this idea to Tony Brown, who was the director of a school in Tallahassee, he offered to host this workshop. This was a long time ago, in 2007, when I taught the first workshop at Cornerstone Learning Community. As Arya got older, we started co-teaching these workshops, and one of them was held in Leon County Public Library in 2012. Do you remember the first workshop, Arya? You were only nine years old. I absolutely do remember the first workshop. I think what was really exciting for me is that, you know, in addition to getting to hang out with my friends, it didn't feel like the math that we were learning in class. It felt like we were just getting to play a series of games and solving a bunch of puzzles, which made it really, really, really fun. As I grew older and began teaching these workshops myself, I really wanted to make sure that all of the new students had that same feeling of having fun. I thought a lot about the way in which we could show the material, the jokes we could tell, history that we could talk about. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of the times math is taught in ways that are really repetitive and can even be boring. And sometimes no one is even telling you why you should care about what you're learning that day. Uh, on the other hand, when you're learning math through these games and puzzles, it's actually really fun. Uh, in our experience teaching kids like you guys, it's a lot easier for you to learn you know, advanced topics this way. 
you know, things like cryptography, number theory, and probability, they're all actually a lot more fun than they seem. And at the end of the day, you're all super smart. So we just need to make sure that we're teaching you the right way. And today we want to tell you about how to send secret messages, which is something we talk about in chapter one of the book. People always had this need. I want to send a message to someone, but I don't want anyone else to see it. So the ancient Greeks actually had a really interesting solution to this problem. Uh, according to a historian, the ancient Cre Greek tyrant Histius once used this interesting method to send a secret message. So he shaved the head of his slave and then he tattooed the message that he wanted to send onto his scalp. And then he waited for all of his hair to grow back before he sent the slave off to the location he wanted to send the message. And then to reveal what was on his head, all the slave had to do was shave all of his hair off again. Now, I don't think any of you guys are gonna wanna sacrifice your haircut just to send one message. I agree with, with you, Arya, uh, totally. Now, the great Roman emperor, Julius Caesar, had a more practical solution. Now, let me show you how Caesar did it. Let's say he wants to send this message to his generals, attack at dawn. I will now switch to my iPad to show you how to turn this into a secret message. So let me see if I can do that. My iPad is taking its time. Okay, success. All right, so I hope you can all see um, the message. Um, attack at down at the top of the screen. And um, so um, what I have done is I have written the alphabet as you see in red letters from A to Z. And then I have written uh, plain text at the top of it. And I'm, I'm gonna explain uh, what that means in a minute. Um, now to turn this plain text into a secret message, there is one piece of information I need. And that is called the key. Um, the key is just a number. And in this case, I wanna pick a simple small number. Let's just pick key to be one, okay? So when the key is one, what I'm going to do next is <clears throat> I'm going to skip a letter in the alphabet. So that means I will be shifting the alphabet and I will be start by one letter and I will start writing the alphabet, uh, you know, starting with B. So what comes after B? Well, that's C. And after C comes D and then E. And I also wanna make sure that the letters, the red letters and the green letters are perfectly aligned. <clears throat> and let me just write uh, the, the rest of the letters quickly. Now I have come to the end, but remember the letter that we skipped? Quick, quick question, Dad. I don't think that we can see the letters after E that you've written. I think maybe there's a connection problem between the iPad and the computer. Uh, can you guys, um, can anyone else see? Anyone? Oh, they there, are, there they come. <laughs> yeah, they all- Oh yeah, they, the letters were just waiting for your secrets message. Exactly. Yeah, never mind. Right. Everything's good now. Good. So now we come to the end Z and there's a missing uh, part, a missing letter. Where do you guys think uh, I'm going to put there? Well, I will put the letter A, right? That was the letter that we skipped. Okay. So now this is going to be our ciphertext. The green letters will be our cipher text. And uh, so let me explain now what we're going to do. To turn 
a tag at down into a secret tag, uh, text, I am going to start, um, well, with the uh, first letter, A, and then I will look for that letter in my red alphabet, because that's the plain text. And what um, green letter corresponds to A? Well, that's B. So then A becomes B in the secret text. And next, I have T. So I need to find T in the plain text, red alphabet. And it's right here. And what is beneath T? What's under T? That is U. So that means U is my next secret letter. And as you notice, there is another T, which is going to be the same as U. Uh, a, well, we already did A, didn't we? We know that it's going to be B. Okay. So what about C? The next letter is C, so let's find C in the red alphabet. And what is under C? It's D. Okay, one final letter of the first uh, word, K. Let's find K, the red K, underneath B, C, and L. So that is the first word in this secret mode. It's simply boobadil. Arya, do you know the meaning of that word? Of course, you don't know the meaning? Everybody knows what boobadil is. <laughs> now, let me finish the rest of the code and I'm just gonna do this um, on my own slowly. Um, Okay, let's see what's in. N is N is O. So there you go. That is the uh, secret message. So what Caesar would do um, is give his messenger this message, and then the person who receives the message, if the person knows the key can then reverse the process to find the actual message, the real message, which was attack at dawn. Okay, dad, I like this idea, but, and don't get me wrong, I like it a lot better than the idea of shaving my head and having to tattoo it. But do we have to really write out the alphabet every single time? That seems really tiring. You're right, good point, Arya. No, we have the code wheels uh, to do that in a very practical way. Now, does everyone have a code wheel? You have a code wheel feel? Oh, awesome, they look so good. That's really great. I'm gonna quickly share um, the instructions for the code wheel and go over what actually a code wheel is. So if you don't have one, maybe you can use this time to quickly whip one together. Uh, so code wheels are a really simple way to encode Caesar codes like my dad was doing. And this time we don't have to write out the alphabet every single time we want to write a message. So uh, the way that you do it is you have your two circles, right? And you have your smaller inner circle and then you have your larger outer circle. So this inner circle, you can see it says plain text. What that means is that on this inner circle, these are the letters of the normal English message that you have, right? So in my dad's example, this is where you would find attack at dawn. And then the larger circle, this is what we call, I'm not sure if you can see, but this is what we call the cipher text or the secret text. So you look at this wheel to see what your English, your normal message, what it becomes in the secret code, right? So when you want to do this, or when you want to create a code, what you want to first do is you want to align the letters of the outer circle and the inner circle. So you can see here I have A right underneath, underneath A, right? And then the next thing you do is you take your smaller circle, you always, always rotate the smaller circle, not the larger one, and always rotate it towards the right, so in a clockwise fashion. And you rotate it to the right, 
however, uh, whatever the number that your key is. For example, in my dad's example, the key was one, right? So I would take my inner circle and I would rotate it over by one, right? But what if the key was, let's say five, right? Well, super easy. Instead of writing the alphabet out again, all I have to do is <laughs> rotate my inner circle until it aligns with the uh, fifth letter here. So I can count, right? So one, two, three, four, five. And that's where my A is now. Uh, so just quickly to show how convenient this is, I'm going to again align my two A's and then I'm gonna shift it over to the right by one. Remember the key that my dad used was one. And um, dad, if you wouldn't mind sharing your uh, screen again, so that we can see the original message. I think you might be muted as well. You are absolutely correct. I was muted. <laughs> Let's see if I can share this iPad. Yeah, so if you guys want to follow along, you're also more than welcome to. All I've done at this point is I've taken my A, and instead of having it directly underneath the A on the larger circle, I rotate it over by one to the right. And remember, always rotate the inner circle, not the outer circle. Sarah and Masud, I noticed that you uh, texted in the chat. If you can tell me exactly what you're confused about, uh, I would love to help you out a little, or maybe I've explained um, what your question was about the circle, using the circle. But okay, so hopefully this helps. So my dad's original message was, um, attack at dawn, right? So the first letter in the normal English message is A, right? So what I do to figure out what my secret letter is gonna be is I look at the inner circle, this is where English is, and I find A, and then I look on the outer circle to find the secret letter. So it's B, right? Uh, just like how my dad did, I find that the first letter is gonna be B, right? Uh, so just uh, to show the example, let's do the next one. The next letter is T. So I find T on my inner smaller circle. Let's see, where is it, where is it, where is it? Oh wow, where is it? Okay, here it is, right? So I find T on my smaller circle, and this is English. So then I look to the larger circle and I see, okay, so T is U in secret language. And just like you can see on my dad's iPad, uh, the next letter is U. And then you kind of go on like this, and it's exactly the same process. It should give you the exact same result. The only nice thing is that you don't have to rewrite the alphabet and you can change uh, your key however you want. So you can rotate it by one, you can rotate by two or however many you need. Great job, Arya. How about we do the reverse? How about you create a secret message for me and then I will try to decode it. And by the way, decode means transforming ciphertext, secret text, into plain text. That sounds like a great idea. Um, okay, so I have a message for you. Are you ready to write it down? Oh, hold on, let me get my pen. Mm. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, the message is XMFW. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> yes, XM. F W P X. Are you writing it and maybe I can't? Okay, there we go. And then a space and then F W J space T Q I J W space Y M F S space Y W J J X. Mm, this so really that's my code does, for you. This does look like a secret message, Arya. Yeah? <laughs> well, what about the key? Well, of course, you have to have the key to be able to decode it. So the key is going to be five. Okay. So let me try to do this. Uh, if you can see me, I'm holding my um, code wheel. And first, I'm going to align uh, the two circles. Okay. So Arya said that the uh, the key is five. 
So what I need to do is rotate the inner circle clockwise by five letters. So I'm going to do that. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So this is what I have now. After I rotated the inner circle uh, by five letters, if you look at letter A on the inner circle, you must see letter F on the outside circle. Okay? If, you, if you do that, then that means you have done it correctly. Um, okay. So I hope, I hope we are all able to uh, get these uh, circles correctly aligned. Now, I'm gonna look at my secret um, message that Arya sent. The first letter is um, X. So Arya, uh, am I supposed to look for X on the inner circle or outside circle? So you should be looking for X on the outer circle because the outer circle is where we have our secret messages. Okay, now I'm looking at the outer circle and um, X, I find X on the outer circle and on the inner circle, S corresponds to X. Okay. Do you think I'm doing it the correct way? I think you're going great. All right. So now next, M. Uh, let me look for M um, on the outside circle. Where that, all right, here's M, here's my M. Okay, and M corresponds to H. And now F, F on the outside circle gives me A on the inner circle. W on the outside corresponds to R. Oh, Ari, I think I know what this is going to be. <laughs> P on the outside is K and X on the outside. Well, we actually already did X. That is going to be S, sharks. Oh, this is getting exciting. Mm, let me do the second word out loud and then I will give you some time to do the other words. F everyone, everyone feel free to start working on this yourself as well. Um, and you can just follow along with us. Okay, so F on the outside is A on the inside. W on the outside is R. And J on the outside is E, sharks R. Okay, so I will do the rest of the code, you know, slowly on my own, and then uh, you can also work on it um, with your friends or with your parents, if you're with them. So maybe we'll leave a few minutes for you guys to work on the code yourself. Um, and if you think you've figured out what it is, you can message it in the chat. Um, if you haven't figured out what it is yet, don't look at the chat in case you get spoiled. Um, yeah, so we'll leave a couple minutes for everyone to work on it. Oh yeah, did you want to say sharks are older than you, dad? Hmm. You know, I think they, I think they might be. <laughs> I will give everyone a few minutes before I write the rest of the, um, the rest of the code. I'm excited. I, I hope we, we get some answers posted in the chat. <laughs> yes, please, everyone feel free to message in as soon as you're done. I really 
enjoy this. I don't want to give it away. I know the answer already. <laughs> I've gotten one correct answer in my messages privately. Wonderful. That's right. Has anybody else solved it yet? I'd love to see what you have to say. Yeah, let's give them just a few more seconds and then the big reveal. <laughs> Hope you guys are exciting. Uh, excited. It's a really exciting message in my opinion. <laughs> All right, Dr. O, give it away. Let's let's see what the answer is. <laughs> okay, I will give the answer letter by letter. How about that? I like it. <laughs> How about that? Sharks are older than trees. Awesome. People knew that. <laughs> Isn't that wild? <laughs> so it turns out actually that sharks have been around for around 400 million years. And the first time that trees actually became their own species was 350 million years ago. So they're super young compared to sharks. Um, so that's actually it for our presentation today. And I hope that all of you had as much fun as we did. And you know, I'm really hoping that you guys can use this method to send some secret codes to your friends that you don't want anyone else reading uh, instead of shaving your heads, obviously. And that would have been really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and just a few more quick notes about the book. Uh, in this book, in addition to learning about secret codes, uh, you can learn about the fundamentals of algebra, operations, prime numbers, numbers and shapes, and probability. I don't know how much that means to all of you guys, but it's super fun. There's games like this in every single chapter. There's also comics, history, and obviously my dad and I had to include our hilarious jokes. <laughs> uh, so now we'd really love to open up uh, the floor to any questions that you guys must uh, or want to ask us. I, I didn't get any questions while you guys were chatting, but I have a question. Um, Ha, I don't know how to phrase this. Have you, the two of you, ever come up with your own secret code system? And if not, do you think that you might develop one of your own? That's a great question. I think the closest thing I got to a secret code system with my dad was speaking Turkish with him when I was younger. That's <laughs> awesome. I love that. <laughs> but it's actually, I mean, you know, if any of you guys are interested, there's a lot of different types of secret codes. This isn't the only kind. There's actually an entire field of math dedicated to coming up with secret codes. And secret codes are actually how our computers work and how our computers uh, can talk to each other with no one being able to figure out what's going on. Oh, that's a very good point. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I've learned a lot, a great deal. <laughs> Uh, does anybody in the chat have any questions? Feel free to, to type them out. Anything that you want to know about secret codes or even math, we could answer some math related questions or even about the book. And if not, I will send everyone on their way. <laughs> Aha, how can I break a code if I don't have the key number? That's a great question. That's, That's a, a really good, good question. You really need the key. Um, and if you don't have the key, maybe you will just try one by one, every possible key. That could take a long time, but 
worth it if the message is good enough, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you really wanted to, you could try every single, um, you could go with your code wheel and you could rotate by one, 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 and try all of them. And you would be able to see probably of the 26 messages that you wrote out, only one of them would be in English. But yeah, like Natalie was mentioning, it would take a long time. Um, but it's actually interesting that you asked that uh, because this code is like pretty easy to break, right? You know how you would break it. And like I was talking about that whole field of math about secret codes, they all try to come up with secret codes that are super hard to break. That's the entire point especially with computers, because that's a situation in which you really don't want anyone to break your code, right? Exactly. Oh, goodness. I'm coming up with all sorts of ideas now. <laughs> um, I have another question. Uh, what is your favorite math topic for both of you, mm -hmm. other than codes? <laughs> uh, Dad, do you want to go first? Okay. I think my favorite... Uh math topic is probability and that's something we actually talk about in the book in the very uh, last chapter uh, and i think um my favorite topic is probably number theory which we do a little a little introduction to in the book as well um but i really like number theory because it turns out that numbers are all related in really weird ways that you would never think of and that's what that field is about Excellent. There's so much more to math than I ever considered uh, coming from a, a different background. So this is, this is wonderful. Um, I do have a, a qu another question. Did your book already come out? Yes, I can answer that one definitively. It's super great. Everybody should definitely take a peek at it. Um, one more question. Do you uh, at all use secret code in your personal life? And if not, do you think it could be something that would become regular? Hmm. I'll give two answers. One answer is that when I initially took this class as a student, I definitely used this secret code to uh, pass notes to my friends. Um, and my second answer to that would be technically all of us use secret codes in everyday life because we're always uh, sending something that's called encrypted data when we use our computers. So that is data that has a secret code so no one else can tell what it is. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, um, I don't think there are any more questions. Uh, a, a small little plug here for The Secret Case of the Coded Fair, which is a Tumblosity book, or a Tumble Home book, excuse me, uh, that goes a little bit more into coding if you guys are interested in, in learning more. Uh, a great many books are at your disposal. Um, I just want to thank you guys for joining us today. I'm probably going to try my hand at writing some holiday cards in code and see if my friends can figure it out. I think that'll be a fun challenge. Great, uh, thank you. you both Girai and Aria. It's been wonderful having you here. And thank you also to the Leroy Collins Leon County Public Library System. Everybody don't forget to grab your copy of the book and check out our next Tumblosity program on December 16th, where we will be talking about all of the potential wrong answers you could come up with for some scientific questions. So stay tuned for something great. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Bye,